Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. I love it. Even in communion, Nico can bring in the green energy bill. <laughs> Wokeness, look fantastic. I love it. So good. Thank you, Jesus. So let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Father, for today. We thank you, Father, for as we come around your word, that you will be front and centre in everything that's said today, that will bring all glory to you, Lord. And as we sang earlier, Lord, let Christ be magnified in Jesus' name. Okay. I've upgraded. I've got a PowerPoint today. <laughs> Coming into the modern world. Um, the last couple of times I've spoken, I've spoken, I felt God, um, as you may recall, I spoke on three things that God spoke to me, the type of people that people uh, that God was wanting in these, in these days, and that were the... Um, Worshippers, watchmen, and warriors. So I just wanted to sort of continue on that theme today and talk about the battle. So I suppose we have questions, and uh, hopefully in uh, what is being said this morning, um, those questions will be answered. And the questions being, um, what, is the, what is the battle? Who will be fighting? Why do we need to fight? Doesn't the Bible say God fights our battles? And then why do we need to be involved? So hopefully those five questions will be answered uh, this morning. Um, some time ago, a, a poll uh, was uh, held and um, the poll um, had these, um, showed that four out of five Christians said the following that they were dying spiritually, their churches were dead or dying, their pastors were so concerned about their own security that they were afraid to offend anybody. I recently heard of a, a pastor in South Africa, a fairly large church, and um, he made, he, in one of his sermons, people made the comment uh, or on social media or wherever that what he had said was racist. And um, he came under a lot of attack. And um, he tried to defend what he said as not being racist. He said, how can I be uh, racist where 90% of my congregation are black? But it doesn't matter to people. Uh, they, they'll, they'll say whatever they like. And he lost 800 people in one week from his church. But he stood strong. And he didn't, didn't bow didn't bow the knee, uh, he stood strong and he explained what he had said and the reasons why he said it and, and, the, and what was behind what he said. Um, within a, a couple of, uh, about a month I think it was, um, uh, those 800 people came back, plus more. God stands with us when we're, we're strong. Uh, we, we are in a battle, there's, there's no doubt about that, you only have to see what's going on. Um, but the um, so when they asked the people in this poll, you know, what what can we change? What needs to be cha uh, changed to turn the tide? They um, they said uh, we need to hear the truth of God's word preached, and we hunger for straight, convincing messages that provoke us to righteousness. Now that word provoke uh, is interesting. Uh, to provoke means to challenge us to challenge us for godly living. So, um, so what they're saying is that the messages that come from the pulpit need to challenge us. Um, uh, the word challenge was a, a very prominent word in the 90s. From the year 2000, the word challenge was gone. People didn't want to be challenged anymore. They wanted it nice and easy and, and gentle. The church went to sleep from the year 2000. And the reason that people went to sleep was because, um, I don't know if, if you remember the, the Y2K uh, drama, uh, that uh, we were all going to go by the year 2000 and you know, our computers were all, you know, this massive thing. And when it didn't happen, a lot of Christians said, well, it didn't happen. And they went to sleep. 
and, and, and I think the church has pretty well gone to sleep ever since that time. So the interesting thing is that um, when this poll was actually conducted, and it was conducted in 1992, 30 years ago, uh, it was conducted by David, David Wilkinson. If you, if he's a very well-known person. And so the thing is that the devil doesn't care how long it takes to, uh, to break down society. It's not in the time periods, um, but he does it piece by piece. Um, it tells us in another poll that they've done recently, not back in 1992, but in recent times, that the, the millennials, which are the, the um, age group would be around uh, sort of mid-30s to early 40s, I think is the millennial um, age, um, um, that only 4% of millennials believe that the Bible is the word of God. So millennials are the ones that are having children now. Their children uh, are, growing, are growing up. And so if only 4% believe in the, in the, the truth of the word of God, that this can... Uh, this is the Word of God. It doesn't contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. Of only 4%, and they're bringing up their children, then the percentages are going to get lower and lower as we get on. But let us not give up hope. Amen. Amen. See, the, the, the battle is not a physical battle or a physical war. It's 100%, 100%, not 99%, not 99.5%. Uh, 99 it is 100% spiritual. And so we are not fighting, uh, so you know, the thing is that we are fighting evil spirits which influence the mind of men and women. And I want you to remember that, that phrase, influences the mind, because that's the, the, the key or the, the central component of what I'm going to be speaking, speaking about this morning. And it's interesting that, that the mind is becoming so prominent. Uh, mental illness today. Is going through the chart, going through off the roof. It's uh, everywhere. You, I was talking to a, um, um, a friend, a, a friend of my son's yesterday. He's a pastor, and his parents have been strong Christians for many, many, many years uh, in their seventies. And his mum has gone through uh, a, a lot of uh, physical things. And I said, "How's she going?" He said, "Physically, she's fine." He said, "Mentally, she's absolutely broken." And that's what um, the last two and a half years has done to people. It's, it's mentally broken people down. And the, the thing is that, um, and it, doesn't, it hasn't taken, um, it's not just non-Christians that are uh, caused, uh, having mental issues these days. It's, it's the Christian church as well, unfortunately. So why does that happen? What, 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 why does that happen? You see, it says it is a spiritual covert action against spiritual truth. By that I mean false teaching, taking scripture out of context. We talked yeah. about this in, um, in that homework uh, during the week, about taking uh, scripture out of, uh, out of context, uh, taking things to, to please what, or, or to, um, to uh, verify or to convince people of what I'm saying is true. What we have to do is to make sure that when we take scripture that we take it in context to make sure that it's what we're saying actually is correct for today. So, so the meaning of covert is to cover up to engage in undercover activities, a place where a person can hide to spring an unexpected attack. Now, you go, well, what does that mean, Ross? Well, if again, over the last couple of years, what have we seen? We've seen families broken, we've seen fam friendships uh, uh, splintered apart. Why? Because I might believe something that's happened yeah. is this way and, uh, and what's happening now we can't come down and have a, a conversation or a discussion um, without people getting personal about it mm -hmm. and this is the way and, and it's mentally affecting people and it's getting into people's minds Isaiah 5 20 says whoa judgment is coming that's scary isn't it judgment is coming to those who call evil good and good evil who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. What does that mean? Nico mentioned some terms uh, before in communion. Woke. A woke agenda. 
a woke agenda that woke people aim to intimidate their, their, their detractors into silence. And that's what's happening today. If, if we have a, a, a biblical view, a biblical world view of what we should be doing today, uh, what are people trying to do? They're trying to silence us. You're seeing this on YouTube and all these different uh, networks now. If people say something or use a certain term or a certain word, uh, they're cut off. Yeah. They're banned. Why? Because they're trying to get their agenda, a non-godly agenda, through uh, and trying to change our mindset. And this is where the battle is. is here, they say from here to here, it's the shortest distance, but it takes the longest period of time to get there. <laughs> and, 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 and it is. The, 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 what goes on up here is amazing. It's, it's just incredible. So the woke agendas. Then we've got this, what's called cancelled cult culture. And, he, and people say, well, these are terms that have just come up in the last couple of years. Cance what's cancelled culture? It's changing history. That's what it is. It's saying what we believed and what we've read in the history books is now changed. It's not like that at all. This is what actually happened. And we see this in, in uh, well, we haven't got a long history here in Australia, but, but even some of the, um, uh, they're trying to, you know, rip down statues because this person said this back in, you know, 18 something or other, or 17 something or 15 something. You know, these people have said that we don't believe that anymore. I was watching a, 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 um, a debate during the week and this, this uh, it was based around the, the situation with the, the, the Essendon um, CEO again and talking about um, how the Christians are being under, are under attack, and we are. But this other guy said, no, no, it's about time Christians were made accountable for their actions. And he started going on of what happened, you know, why isn't, why isn't, why can't a, a woman be, a, be the Pope and all these, all these different things. And it was just, you know, good calling evil, um, you know, e e calling evil good and good evil. And that's where we're at today, where people are calling things that are good evil. Yeah. They're calling people who stand up for the word of God evil. Uh, we're not loving. We're not inclusive. We're not this, we're not that. And we're all those things. And so what we have to do is, is not take on board what, what these people are saying. We need to have a protection and need to have a barrier that will protect us. And how do we do that? Well, Ephesians 6, 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, con uh, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, the powers, and against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly or supernatural places. That's a powerful scripture. That whole... That whole um, passage of scripture from uh, Ephesians 6 from verse 10 through to 18 is powerful but you know so our struggle is not against us you know norm, normally but it's against the spiritual activities people sometimes don't even know that they're, that they're carrying some sort of spiritual activity and so, um, so, so these people who are putting, uh, putting in evil laws and evil uh, regulations and restrictions uh, to control us are being used. I don't know whether always willingly, but they're being they're being used by Satan himself. They are they are Satan's pawns in this in this day. It's no coincidence that leaders throughout the world are using the same terminology. You watch, you watch the leader of Canada or the leader of New Zealand or the, you know, the, um, um, over in Europe or wherever it may be, they're using the same terminology. It's the same things uh, and it's like this, this set thing. This is what you need to say. This is, these are the terms that you need to, need to use. And they're all coming out of the same playbook. In, um, in 1 Peter 5, uh, 8, 8 to 9, um, the scripture says, Stay alert. Okay, we can stop there. We can have a whole sermon on stay alert. Okay, stay alert. Watch out for your enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. 
Okay, a few things there. Stay alert. How do we stay alert? Word of God. Word of God. Prayer. Fellowship. Those sort of things. Staying alert. Being aware. Um, when you pray, pray with an open Bible. See what the, as you're praying, see what God's saying to you. Let the, let the word be a ream of word to you. And he's, see, the, it says there, the devil is prowl, prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to hurt, injure, annoy, no, devour. When a lion devours you, you don't survive. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, a number of years ago, my, my son, who was a landscaper from Melbourne, he had this job at the Melbourne Zoo. And anyway, doing concreting and putting in this, all this new, uh, new um, area for giraffes and whatnot. Anyway, one day these guys came to him from the zoo and said, can you come and give us a hand, Chris? He said, oh yeah, well, okay, what do you want me to do? He said, uh, we've just sedated a lion <laughs> and we need to and, and we need to carry him to the, um, the medical area because they, they sedated him and then they apparently did checking on their teeth and all these different things. Anyway, so Chris came with about another six guys and they came and they lifted this line and carried, he said it was the most amazing experience he's ever had in his life. He said that the line, that the mane was like a, a steel mesh. It was so thick. He said, and then they got, them on, got him onto the, onto the table, onto the examining table, and the teeth, he said, I'm, he said, like teeth and sharp. He said, and then their claws, they, they retract the claws, but when they brought the claws out, these claws would be like just shredding, they just go through um, people like melted butter. That's a roaring lion. That's a lion. That's, who, that's the sort of thing that we're up against uh, these days. But it says, stand firm. Hold the line. Don't take a backward step. Okay? If, if you can't do anything else, stand your ground. Don't, don't retreat in any way. We need to stand firm in our faith. We need to stand firm in our biblical truth. In other words, what the Word of God declares. See, the Word of God will be com completely contrary to what the world will be telling us. What the news articles say, what the, uh, the, uh, what the, um, the current affairs and all these things. We need to ensure that we are in unity and supporting one another. As a church, we need to be supporting one another. You know, I was just wonderful, you know, Val was it well um, after last Sunday's service. And, you know, Rosemary and Vic, you know, sending messages out to everyone, you know, asking people to pray and all those different things. David went through a tough time. Um, at the beginning of this week, and so he, he makes contact in, uh, and with people, and people are praying and supporting one another. That's what unity is all about. Really, really important. So, what are some of our strategies that we need to um, take into place? Well, the first thing is that just as Satan has strategies, we need to have a strategies for the battle. And the first strategy is to be prepared. probably one of the main key issues that we need to be prepared. If we're not prepared, then um, it's interesting, um, we I talked about the church going to sleep uh, uh, since the year 2000. We've become relaxed. We've become yeah. very blasé about things. We've, um, we've had it so well. We've had it so good. Talk, about, talk to Christians in, in um, Nigeria. See what, hear what they're, they're, they're doing. It's, it's just amazing. Um, uh, Cheryl and I watched an amazing movie, true story last night, called Rise, R-I-S-E, Rise. And it's about this family from Nigeria that had to escape Nigeria. Christian people, they had to leave their baby behind to escape. Am absolutely amazing story, it's great ending. Um, but rise, and it just talks about the, the, what, what they went through, what they had to do to survive, just to survive. Uh, how they had to escape to Turkey and then to Greece and they ended up in America. Uh, just an amazing thing. We don't, we, the Western Church has, hasn't gone through suffering. You, you look at the people, uh, Christians, apparently amazing revivals in Iran today. 
and, and it wouldn't be easy. They would be, uh, the underground church there, the things that they have to be aware of, uh, China, you know, all these different um, Muslim countries where, where there's great things going on. Um, we just don't know the half. But being prepared is very important. In the, um, I haven't got this on the, on the screen, but uh, in Acts 19, there's a, a story there um, about the seven sons of Sceva uh, from verses 14 through to 16. It says, the seven sons of Sceva, a leading priest, were doing this. So they were going around um, using Paul's name to cast out evil spirits. That's what they were doing. Um, but one time, when they tried it, the evil spirit replied, and this is the key, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leapt on them, overpowered them, attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. Why? They weren't prepared. They thought, oh, that's a good idea, I'll just do this now, go around casting out this and that. If we're not prepared, we'll, we will lose. I'm sorry, we will lose if we're not prepared. In, uh, in, in uh, uh, Ephesians 6, um, uh, which I talked about the scripture before, and I, just, uh, I don't think it's up there on the screen either, mate, but verse 13 it says, Therefore, put on the complete armour of God, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil days of danger. And having done all, done everything that the crisis demands, to stand in your place, fully prepared, fully prepared, immovable and victorious. Okay? It tells us to stand in your place, fully prepared fully prepared, equipped, ready, that we've, we've, we've done the hard yards, we've done the study, we've done, done everything, we've prepared ourselves. Um, for over nearly 30 years, I, I, um, my, my profession was I was a trainer, I trained people. Probably, I'm, I, I confess, probably, I'm probably not the best trainer around, but I knew my stuff. I prepared myself, I equipped myself. You know, uh, I do a message, you know, Nico and Karen asked me to do a message. I have, you know, I, I work on it for, for weeks, prepare myself because I know that I need, if I don't, then it won't be effective. So you need to prepare yourself, you need to equip yourself. So how do we prepare ourselves? Well, we need to know our enemy. That doesn't mean we put all our emphasis and our, our sight on him. We don't give him that glory, but we need to know who we're fighting, who he is, what's his strategies, the lay of the land. Now it talks there about in, in 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, you know, it said there, um, um, look out, he, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to, to devour. They, uh, if you listen to um, um, park rangers and all these different people who know what, what lion's about and what they do, they look for animals that are weak. That's, that's, that's their stock trade, is to look for weak animals. And when, an, when a lion, the, 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 the daddy lion gets too old, he can't run around and chase them anymore. So what the, what the old lion does, he hides in thickets. One thing he can do, even though he's old, he can roar. So what he does is he stands in the thicket and so when this, this, this prey comes along, the younger lions are not with him, they're over the other side. And when the, the old man, the old lion roars, it scares the prey in the opposite direction to the roar. And where are the young lions? Right in their path, where they're coming. And they, they, they run straight into the trap. So we need to know the strategies. We need to know the lay of the land. How do we do that? How do we prepare? By reading and studying the Word of God, as I said before. By praying with an open Bible, as I said before. Attending prayer meetings. That was just wonderful this morning in our prayer meeting. 
half the church was there. It was amazing. It was incredible. And it was just a powerful time. We can't, the, the church can't prepare or can't be effective unless there is behind the scenes prayer. Yeah. People praying, not just at prayer meetings on a Sunday morning, but praying uh, during the week and praying for our church, praying for you know, the list of people you know, in our church and all those different things. Bible studies, you know, like we're doing on Tuesday nights, opening the Word of God, discussing it, um, clarifying things. People, oh, what does this mean? How does that work? What does that uh, phrase mean? What does that verse of Scripture mean? Seeking our good teaching. So, seeking our good teaching. There's plenty of stuff on the internet today, but it's not all good. We need to be discerning. We need to be, make sure, Lord, what's, 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 what's the spirit behind this? What's, what's happening? The second thing in regards to our battle strategies is that we have to be properly equipped. What equipment is available? How to use it? How to practice it? Who's heard the term, practice makes perfect? Yeah. You heard that term? Okay. You agree with that? I don't. Practice makes permanent. Okay. Practice makes permanent. You practice the wrong thing and you won't be perfect. It's like a golf, you go for golf lessons. If your hands are not in the right place and you just keep back hitting the ball all the time, or keeps going out that way, it's because you're practicing the wrong technique. So what, what we have to make sure is that we, what we practice is the right stuff, the right thing. See, um, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, and this is a scripture that um, we, we speak uh, every day. Uh, I've only got verses 4 and 5 on there, but I'll start with verse 3 if you don't mind, because I should have put that on there. It says, For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. All right? The weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons of the flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and everything, every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. It's all up here. It's the mind. What are we, what are we putting into our mind? What, what are we feeding ourselves? See, our weapons are divinely powerful, it says. Foolish to the world's, from the, the world's perspective. The world would look at it. You know, um, it's, it's like the world, you know, you say, you tithe to the church. You what? It's a powerful weapon. Tithing is a powerful weapon. But you don't earn enough. Like if I said to people, you know, um, I do a little bit of part-time work, which finished a couple of weeks ago because the, the company went into receivership, as I talked about. So what do you, what would the world do? You, you tighten in your, you tighten your, your belt in, your financial belt. What should we do? Increase. What the world says is right, we should be looking at the opposite. If you look at something on the nine o'clock news, you can almost guarantee that the opposite is the facts. Yes, they're, not, they're not giving you the facts. They're not giving you the truth these days. Destroying sophisticated arguments. Sounds good on the surface, but we need to dig deep down to reveal the true agenda. There are agendas out there, folks. Now, they're, they're even calling them agenda, agenda 20, Agenda 30. They're calling them agendas. There are agendas out there, evil agendas, that are there, and, the, and I can tell you the number one target is us. Oh, you're paranoid, Ross. Yeah. Oh, look, they're not against Christians. The Premier of Victoria said the other day about people who have similar views in regards to homosexuality and one. They're, these sorts of people are not welcome in this state. Hello? I'm glad I got out. Here's another one. We need to follow the science. 
Isn't that wonderful? The only problem is the science changes every week. Does, what are you yeah. supposed to follow? Science, my goodness. When, you suit, when it suits them. They don't hear that anymore because they don't want the science anymore. They needed it for two years. They hid behind chief medical officers and all this sort of stuff when it suited them. Yeah. It's called social engineering. Yeah. It's a psychological manipulation of people into performing acts or, for, or performing actions. That's what social engineering is. And then there's the latest thing is economic engineering. The treasurer has just gone over to America to, work, um, to meet with the World Bank and the uh, Inter International Monetary Fund before he does his budget in two weeks. <laughs> oh, whoa. I wonder why he's doing that. What are they controlling? And this is, it's all about control. Okay, all about control. They're controlling. Um, you didn't have this up here, but we, uh, in Victoria, we were, we were restricted to a five kilometre limit of how far we could go from our home. We could exercise. Oh, we, we were so privileged. We could exercise for one hour, one hour a day. <laughs> we had night cur curfews, as if COVID was going to go away after nine o'clock. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. You know? uh, we used transport, you know, transport, petrol prices, travel vaccinations restrictions, all these different things. What we eat, that's still to come. Yeah, Food shortages, things that, you, know, you go, Ross, gee, this is encouraging. <laughs> well, yes it is, because God's in control. We, got, we, got, we just um, read this morning where they're, they're looking at putting stuff in milk and all these sort of things. Uh, I just said to Cheryl, um, well, you know, as we always do, we pray before we eat. We give thanks before we eat. God knows what's going on. He's not going, gee, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. They're injecting something into the milk. <laughs> I think you've got a bit of a brain. I think you've got an idea of what's going on. See, Satan wants to capture our, our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. If he gets our minds, then the heart comes easily. Yeah. Romans 12, 12. We probably all know this. I'm sorry, it's, it's Romans 12, 2, not Romans 12, 12. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart. Set apart. Not being part of the world, but being set apart. As a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. How true. Gee, this sounds like it was written last week. Yeah. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what is willing, the will of God, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. Many years ago, I went to a, a conference of a fellow called, um, his name was, whatever it was. <laughs> and he was, <clears throat> he was talked about <laughs> the chaps in the top paddock. What goes on up here, the, the, cha the chaps in the top paddock, the talk. Do you know when we talk, when we're, we're speaking, we speak around about 150 to 160 words a minute. That's our normal when you're, when you're speaking, 150 to 160 words a minute. There's a thing called self-talk. You ever heard of self-talk? Self-talk generally happens probably about 2 o'clock in the morning. It's uh, at the darkest time of the night. And it's when, when you're lying awake and you can't go to sleep because all these thoughts are going through your mind. It's called self-talk. Do you know the rate of self-talk? How many words a minute go through your mind at self-talk? 1,200 to 1,500 words a minute. Ten times the amount. So, so it's, it's quite, you know, when you say things like, my mind's racing, I can't stop it. That's the, ch the chaps in the, in the top paddock having a, having a field day at two o'clock in the morning at the darkest time of the night when you can't get to sleep. And then you wake up and you finally get to back to sleep about three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning. Then you wake up about six and you go, what was all that about? How stupid was that? 
but it's it's the activity that's going on in in the mind. See, uh, the word transformed. It says they're being transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Transformation is a change or renewal from a, a life that no longer conforms to the ways of the world, to one that pleases God. Uh, that word transformed uh, in the uh, Greek, it's called uh, metamorphosis. Uh, so a metamorphosis is where, uh, when we were, we were kids, we used to have a box and you'd, you'd have a worm or a caterpillar in the box. And, it, and uh, do you remember silkworms? Remember that? We used to have all the silkworms and they'd, they'd, they'd form a little cocoon and then they'd change. And that's the way a caterpillar goes from a, from a caterpillar to a butterfly. But the part in between, between being a caterpillar to being a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly, is this term or area called metamorphosis, which is um, being changed, but it's sticky and it's yucky and it's all these sort of things, but the end result is wonderful. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to change the way we think. See, don't be fooled. God has a plan. God has a plan against every strategy and a plan to put Satan in his place. But the transitional process, the, 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 the process takes time. John 10.10 10 says, The thief comes in order to steal and kill and destroy. I, Jesus, came that you may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That's God's plan. And I'll just finish with this, um, with this, with this scripture. It's not on the screen, uh, guys, but um, I just put this in this morning. Philippians 4.8. From the, it's called the Expanded Bible. I've just discovered the Expanded Bible. It's fantastic. It says, finally, in conclusion, or now, now then, brothers and sisters, think about, focus your thoughts on, fill your minds with, Things that are true and honourable and right and just and pure and beautiful and lovely and, respect, and respected and commendable. That's a mouthful, isn't it? So, what do we need to think about? Think about, focus your thoughts, fill your minds with things that are true, honourable, right, just, pure, beautiful, lovely, respected, commendable. There's your homework for the week. If there is anything that is good, morally excellent, and worthy of praise, think about, focus your thoughts on, and fill your minds with these things. It doesn't say Jesus will do that. It says we have to do that. We've got a part to play. He's going to help us do it by all means. By so how do we do that? Well, we read the Word of God. We, 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 we turn off Channel 9. Yeah. We turn off the ABC. Yeah. We turn off SBS. Let's, let's, let's get our minds away from the world and what they want to fill our minds with and fill it with what God had intended. That's the battle. The battle is for us to change, okay, by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, verse 2, by the renewing of your mind, by changing your mindsets, by, by focusing, it says, on godly values and ethical, have ethical attitudes. This is all part of what we have to do. Oh, it's too hard for us. No, it's not too hard. It's just that we've allowed ourselves to be here where we need to be over here. And so we have to start, we have to make a choice, we have to make a decision. We've, you know, we, we pray quite a bit, but we've made a decision, um, uh, just as a, as a couple, that we're, that we're setting aside um, um, extra time of prayer um, every Monday night for our family, for, for our friends. Why? Because... Are they going through tough? No, they're probably going through really. They're probably doing really, really well. 
But that doesn't matter. If you don't prepare yourself in the good times, when the bad or the hard times come, you're not going to be prepared. And so it's really, really important for us to make sure that we've got all the things in place, our reading procedures, our reading the Word, praying, fellowshipping, going to Bible study, whatever it may be, putting it in place now so when the, these times come, they're not, you know, we'll, we'll go directly into where our mind is and, and filter through the Word of God. Let's pray. So, Father, we thank you for your goodness today. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your favour. We thank you, Lord, that we, even though we're in the battle, you are on our side. You've equipped us, you've prepared, uh, and we need to be prepared and ready to go with you in this battle. And we, we don't do it in our own strength. We don't do it in the natural. We don't do it in the, in the physical. But we, we do it with, with your Holy Spirit with us, in us, leading us and guiding us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.